Let's get right into it. It is Saturday, April 26, 2025. I am very concerned about a possible major tornado threat on Monday, April 28th. 2025. So that would be in two days. We begin right now with the latest outlook from the Storm Prediction Center, their day three outlook. And this is going to be a moderate level four out of five. Cities involved, St. Paul, Des Moines, Cedar Rapids, Cedar Rapids, Rochester, Minnesota, and Bloomington, Minnesota as well. You see that we have that moderate risk right there. And we have a lot of ingredients that are kind of coming together that could create for the perfect storm of some discrete supercells that could eventually turn into a line segment of severe thunderstorms. And don't worry, we're going to walk you through exactly how this is all going to evolve. So let's get a look right now. And we begin with some very interesting jet stream dynamics. Here's a look at Monday. This is going to be Monday midday. And you can see right now we got a, a strong upper level jet stream right here. You can see that coming in right here with the uh, lines kind of spread apart. You know what we call that in the weather world? We call that divergence. And divergence allows for rising air in the atmosphere. Well, that's kind of how you get things juiced up. You need the air to rise. That's exactly what this pattern will be favorable for. All right, what's more interesting is the mid-levels. Take a look right here what the mid-levels are going to look like. And this is going to be around uh, five to 10,000 feet. And check it out for yourself, folks. I mean, take a look at these strong winds. You know, for tornadoes, you need... Winds going different direction with height. So you can see right here, we have strong winds at 10 to 15,000 feet. And then we have some lighter winds here. So that's what we call speed shear. There will be some directional shear. I'm mostly concerned about speed shear. And that's a big component of how you get these tornadoes fired up. All right, something else I want to talk about right now. Another ingredient that you need is what we call CAPE. All right, it stands for Convective Available Potential Energy. Essentially, it just means, is the air buoyant enough? That's all it means, okay? Is the air going to be buoyant? How do you get buoyant air? You need rising air. You need uh, moisture and instability. And we get that from that low-level jet pumping in that moisture from the south. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do for you right now. This is Rochester Airport. Where is this? Minnesota. I want to point something out for you guys, okay? Pay attention. So right now, take a look at that cape, okay? This is the energy. We call it storm energy right here. And where is the time? This is going to be peaking when? Monday. Monday afternoon. Midday to late afternoon. That's when the cape is going to be peaking the most. And we're looking at some pretty decent cape when all is said and done. All right, so let's move on here, and uh, we got some more interesting stuff to talk about. So I want to go hour by hour, and I want to share with you uh, how this is all going to evolve uh, as we head into the future. And you'll notice that we start you off here heading into Monday. Now, as we head into um, Monday, well, it says right here, Tuesday at 0Z. Well, we're off by five hours in central time. So that's going to be Monday at 7 p.m. Okay. If you don't listen to anything else in this video, here we go. Monday at 7 p.m. You can see right now that we are getting some thunderstorms developing. We do have this line that forms, but I'm actually I'm wanting to take you back a step. Okay. Listen to this right here. So this is going to be Monday at 18 Z. This is going to be late morning going into early afternoon. You don't really see a lot of activity. You do see an upper level low that's going to be strengthening. But right here, here we go. Juicy moisture coming in from the Gulf. And you can see that we're going to start firing up some uh, some thunderstorms. You know, the model isn't doing a good job right now this far out showing some discrete supercells. But I think as early as 2, 3 o'clock Monday afternoon, uh, we could be firing up some thunderstorms right in here. These uh, models don't do a great job showing it. And let me draw that out for you right here. Again, you can see the precipitation up here. But right here, this is what we call that triple point south of the warm front, but east of the cold front. We are expecting some development in here. The model doesn't even show it yet. And typically, they don't when we're this far out. The high resolution models uh, that come in 48 hours before the event normally do a pretty good job depicting that. But I digress. 
All right, let's walk you through. Pay attention to where you live. I'll keep you posted on the time, okay? I want to make your life nice and easy for you. Here we go. This is going to be 7 o'clock and then heading into uh, midnight. Notice that we see that line right here. And then that line quickly runs out of gas. So this is going to be midnight Monday night. And you can see right here that we are going to be looking at some isolated severe thunderstorms across Indiana and Illinois. But those areas are only going to be looking at a slight risk. It's really that moderate risk across western Wisconsin and parts of eastern Minnesota. The threat does not end on Monday. Look at this. Going into uh, Tuesday, look at this. The day four outlook, the Ohio Valley down to the deep south. I mean, it's severe weather season. We are heading into late April, early May. This is typically when things get cranking. We'll see you in the next video.